I'm Michael C. I'm a teacher. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm an uncle. I'm a friend. I'm a husband. But most importantly, I'm a father. I created the Skybox in 2021 to show to you that being a rapper and a ball player isn't the only way they can provide opportunity for themselves. In season five, Rise Above, we're gonna explore some special guest journey and see how they rose above their circumstances. And they just didn't become good, they became great. On this episode today, we have a discussion with podcast host, author, and police officer, Clee Tillman. And we discuss how do the police take accountability when it comes down to the black and brown community, and how are they trying to narrow the gap in the trust with the black and brown community? And we also discuss his books and his podcast and a lot more. Sit back and relax. And enjoy. Welcome to Rise Above, where we don't let our temporary setback become our permanent failure. It's me, Michael C., and so it's a light over the mic. Sit back and relax, y'all. I got a special one here. I got a special one. You know when you at that cookout and you see that big, broody, <laughs> bustly man? And you're like, yo, man, who's that dude over there, man? Oh, and they're like, oh, he's just a big old teddy bear. <laughs> then after a while, you get to know him. Really is a big old talking teddy bear. <laughs> but then you really get to know him. And you gotta understand, this man is a walking media. <laughs> and after that, he likes to protect and serve. I want to introduce you to someone rear very near and dear to me. I want to introduce author, podcast, <laughs> and an officer. My guy, my guy, Clee Tillman. What's good with you guys? What's going on? What's going on? Thank you for that introduction. I appreciate that. No, man, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. You already know what it is, guy. You know what it is. Welcome to Rise Above, my friend. Thank you for having me. All right, Thank all right. Having me. Well, let's just get right into this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, like I said, you are an, you are a police officer. I am. How long have you been on the force? I've been working in law enforcement for 17 years now, and I was before that I was in the army for three years, so I got about 20 years of experience in public service. Oh my, my God, my yeah, God! Yeah, Let me go ahead and salute yeah, you, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah. You, you're the reason why America don't don't let me say this, but not great again. But he's still. <laughs> you know what I mean. What's your current position in law enforcement? Right now, I'm a uh, number two guy in my department uh, for patrol on the platoon. So I'm still working day shift, night shift to make sure everyone's safe, to keep things moving smoothly. And to, I'm still working the streets. I'm still, I'm still out there in the grind. I'm still out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the I got away from it for a little while, but then I'm right back in the mix. I know that's right. I know. What has inspired you to become a police officer? Or even who inspired you to become a police officer? They're both one and the same. Uh, I'm a second generation police officer. Uh, for those uh, that don't know, my, I have the same name, I have the same build as my dad. My dad was a police officer from uh, 1969 till 1980 until his death. He um, was 11 years in the game. Uh, he died, blood clot went to his heart. So guys, make sure you check on your health. Uh, but when I, when I was four years old, I knew just by looking at my dad and I was, I was two years old when he died. Uh, but I knew I was going to be a police officer when I learned about my dad and what he did. So from the age of four until the age that I could start applying, I knew that that's what I was going to be doing. Let me ask you this. Like, even with all of the the temperature, we're going to say, how mm -hmm. it's building up between mm -hmm. police officers and lower class communities, mm -hmm. how 
how do you take it when you hear about the stigma, how you hear about police officers? Uh, I, I take it to heart. I take it very personal because I know I didn't get into this profession uh, to demean people, to, to, to do wrong to people. I actually want to be the face when I show up, like, I'm glad he's here. Right. I'm like, that's my guy right there. That's what I right. want people to say. Uh, so I know this job is very cyclic. Like I say this on my show all the time. Sometimes we're at the very bottom, which it seems like we've been there a long time. Most times we're right there in the middle where people don't, uh, they don't care about us until they need us. And then sometimes we're at the top. You know, 9-11 uh, was one of those moments when we were at the top and people walked out. Thank you for your service. Right. We appreciate you guys. Uh, and we go in cycle. Sometimes the one bad apple spoils the bunch and we just got to go through it and deal with it. But I know with uh, underserved communities, uh, I, I like me and I, and I push it through the department that we serve everyone with equal regularity and justice because everyone deserves that, that to be treated fairly and, and the, for the law to uh, be held upright for them as well. Right, right. Y'all heard it. There are a bad, a bad apple. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to show you right now, right here, not the bad apple. He's one of the reasons why. He's trying to get the bad apples out the tree. Mm -hmm. And trying to make our communities a little bit safer. I want you to marinate on that. And we'll be back right after this. Michael D. We talk to life over the mic. You already know who I got. I got right now Officer Tillman in the building. You know who it is. But we're going to get right into it. What's the ratio of the officers to residents to where you're, you're at? That's a good question because we, we have real estate going up. Uh, they're just being thrown up now where you got single family homes. You got apartments being thrown up. Um, but I would say... And this is it's off the top of my head now because the numbers are still skyrocketing now with uh, the start of school, the school year. Uh, to every every maybe fifty people, there's at least one officer. One hundred people, one officer. Or so give or take the ratio. I, that's a rough number. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. What are your views and your stands on how minorities are viewed police officers? Uh, from what I see, that uh, and, and it's partly why well, I have the. Um, podcasts I have now and the uh, Sergeant Beef Safe is minorities don't see officers in a good light. Um, it's being, it's, it, we're, I've seen families being told not to trust police officers, not to trust the law, not to call. And, and you go into schools, you go into homes, and automatically you see younger generations automatically shying away. And it's a hurtful feeling because I like kids. I used to coach kids. And it's not a, it's not the right deal. I know, like we talked about, one bad apple can spoil the bunch. But I know we're not all like that. We got into this job to be of service and to help our communities. Right. Most of us are still living in the communities that we grew up in, and we want to see it move better. We want to see it make a positive change and not be uh, some something drastic. So we we work hard. We we fight hard to engage with our our underserved, our younger community, so we can be an asset, not a detriment. So how do you, they get the trust from the lower poverty communities from the officers? Uh, we make a special effort to be to show up in those communities and not always there because there's a, a, something bad happening. Right. You know, I, I've seen I've done it and I've seen guys do it. Ride through, get out our car, we play basketball with the kids playing basketball. We go to football with the kids doing doing football. Water guns with the kids doing that. Talk about the latest video games and, and things like that. We show up at football practices when they're going on. We walk through the halls of school. We know the teachers. We know the parents. Most of us have volunteered in the community or at some sort of capacity. And then you have those those things with um, donut cops. With, what's it called? Coffee with a cop. Uh, uh, moms with mom. You show up at events like that. You become a familiar face. And that way people know, you know, that's not just Officer Tillman, that's that's Mr. Clee right there. Right. And when I see Mr. Clee, I know he's about that good stuff. And so at least if nothing else, I can go shake his hand. I can go get a card from him. And not even going on, it's just to say, 
What up, officer? What's please? going on? Yep. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. uh, give me an example of you providing a service above and beyond the line of duty. A service above and beyond the line of duty was, I would say, seven years that I was coaching midget football. I did it on my own time. I took a lot of vacation time. I took a lot of comp time just to make sure I made practices and definitely made sure I made games. And I, I got to be uh, the father figure to a lot of young kids that I didn't know were even out there or were going through something. And then I would take more personal time if somebody, if a family was going through something, I'm not going to name names or put people out there, but just to go ahead and interact with them, to have the conversation with them. Moms are struggling for whatever reason. The kid's not doing good in school for whatever reason. Custody issues for whatever reason. So it goes above and beyond the job. It's just wanting to help people right. and serve the community. And I, I, I know I've done that for seven years, and it was rewarding. It was an unpaid position. I actually, <laughs> if you look at it, I lost money because I'm taking vacation time and comp time uh, uh, to do this, but it was so fulfilling. Right. You know and what just I mean? to see the joy that you had with those kids. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That's yep. all it takes. What's the initiative and programs that are aimed to improving community relations and the trust with the law, law enforcement? We have a lot. We it's our Comtech unit. We get out and engage with the community, um, especially with those back to school bashes that were going on yeah, all last oh month. God, we're yeah, we're there yeah, yeah. for the, not only just for security, not only for the help with the parking, but we're there interacting. We're playing ball. We're in the game truck. Mm -hmm. It's it's somebody. We we show up for all these things to make sure that we're, everyone knows that we're there to help. Uh, we were there for National Night Out. We had uh, things going on. Uh, we got the SRO in the school to engage with the kids. We have uh, agencies that are affiliated with us that can help with home parenting, that can help with behavioral issues, that can help with substance issues or psychological mental health. Mental health is a big deal hey, right now. And, and they're, we're jumping on it. We're being proactive with it because we, we want, you want to alleviate so many different problems before they become a bigger problem and then become a detriment to society. Let me ask you this question mm -hmm. now. Let's... We're going to turn the good and we're going to turn a little bit into that. Okay. Like you're right now, we're seeing violence is going up to, in a dramatic way. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing police brutality also going up in a dramatic way. Mm -hmm. And it's towards blacks, mm -hmm. browns. With, let me put it to you in a scenario. Okay. If that was happening in front of you, I know some people would say, I don't know what I do. But I would say as a police officer, you're kind of trained at 17 to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? If you've seen it to the point, God rest his soul, of a possibly a George Floyd mm -hmm. matter, what would you have done? So it's a good question, and I appreciate you asking that because we learn by hearing and we learn by education. Um, with our department and a lot of other departments they've adopted, it is not policy. So therefore, even if you're uncomfortable, let's just say you're a lower level officer and you see a senior level officer doing something wrong and you don't want to say anything, but we all have our jobs, we all have a hierarchy, you don't want to go to the boss and say something that you're not supposed to at any job. Now it's policy with a lot of local departments where no matter where you're at, if you see some wrongdoing, you have to intercede right there. Like, hey, whoa, slow down. Hey, I understand emotions may get involved or whatever have you. If, if something's going on, take a step back. We got it from here before things escalate and get wrong. Things escalate and get wrong, you got to be that whistleblower like immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. So there is a there was like a Hulu a documentary Okay. talking about pretty much the looking at America and knowing that the dirty secret, mm -hmm. they say it would be police brutality towards black and brown. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Hmm. That's another good question. I did not see the documentary, so I can't speak on that firsthand. But I, I your opinion. Let me ask you about your opinion. Have I seen? Yeah, I've seen uh, police brutality, uh, of, of course, throughout the nation on TV, on YouTube. Have I seen it firsthand while I was working? Uh, I might have saw remnants of it at first with my original department, uh, just snide comments or or just overt charging or things like that. They can have so many different, the, the monster can have so many different faces. What the job fully was while I was still evolving. Now to see, I, I'm at a position now where, for one, I'm happy to say I don't see it. Uh, I'm also at a higher level than I was then. And if I do, I'm able to shut it down and make a difference. 
uh, because it's not necessary. I know it, it, there's a lot of history involved with um, good and bad policing in our nation. Uh, we've got stigmas, more negative stigmas than positive stigmas. Uh, and, and my goal and with our department is to uh, uh, get away from the negative and move to the positive and be more more of a caring and understanding department, if that makes sense. How are they handling the complaints about against officers and ensuing accountability? That's a great question, because now we have body cams that are on, on basically 24 seven when we're on a call and they automatically record what's going on. And at first it was like, oh, now, now we're the only professional we're recorded all the time. But it's turned out to be a good thing. Body cams have saved many of us because uh, not to throw shade at the public, but people have come in the department and were accused the officer of doing X, Y, and Z. And then you could go back and review the body cam, which is actual footage. You can't doctor it up or anything and see that X, Y, and Z did not happen. Or even be in the opposite way too. Yes, okay. yes. So if something was done wrong, then you know what? You could pull that officer in and you have that educational moment. Like, hey, you did this wrong. You need to follow up with this and that. And it's, let's say it's basic level. Right, know, right, just, right, right, right. Just right, learn. Right, but right. if something's grievously done, 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 obviously where it was intentional and it was criminal, then it's dealt with right yep. there on. Yes. Yeah. And you can't hide it. Can't hide it. Yep. You heard him. You can't hide it. At this point, it's on camera. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we got those cell phones. So you can't hide it. At the end of the day, I want you to marinate on this conversation because this one was a good one. And we'll be back right after this. Let's make this epic. Go on, YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button. It's only three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Are you on YouTube? Yup. Spotify. <laughs> we're back. We're back. You already know who it is. It's Michael C. The sort of light over the mic. At first, we're gonna call him Officer Tillman, but now we about to get into the good stuff. <laughs> we about to go to the author, the host of his podcast, and I'm gonna let him talk about it. Go ahead and get him, guys. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You know, this. some of you may watch, but some others of you may not. I'm Coach Clee. It's a motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite baker's favorite baker coming at you. I used to have a podcast that started back in 2016 called The Lab. You see two books sitting right here where I would interview individuals that were in the community, whether they had uh, businesses, products, or positive messages. And they would come into my home, and we'd set up the camera, and we'd go ahead and have fun with the interview until, you know, C-19 hit, and then things changed, we started going Zoom. And when Zoom, I evolved into doing the Zoom where I got the platform now, where then I could have commercial breaks, where I could have music, where I could have guests nationally. And that was a lot of fun. And so that developed me owning my own uh, book publishing company, One Way Publishing, which the books right here you see in front of you. I've got five self-published books. And I've got many other books out there by uh, clients. Yes. And so the Lab in the Lab Part 2 were individuals who were local, who were entrepreneurs. that tells their stories on how they came up, what they do, and things that they're, they're planning on doing with the next three to five years for their goals. And we talked about that in those books. Those books are all available on my website, workwithclee.com. The other two books that you see up here were March 4th and Hashtag Grudge. Hashtag Grudge is actually my most popular book right now. Those books are self-help books. We talk about, you know, breaking, going to get your breakthrough, toxic people and toxic situations. We talk about anger. We talk about depression. We talk about making mistakes and how to overcome that. Hashtag Grudge, 10 tips to LIG, 10 tips to let it go, you know, so you can live your best life. And last but not least, we got No Shade All Light, where you, some of you may know Clarence Stokes. Jason Brown, Herb Thompson, and myself, we all wrote 25 of our favorite quotes and what they mean to us. So it's over 100 quotes in that book with meaning. And those are just the five that I have. I'm working on, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away because the wheels are turning. Now, right now I'm working on two more books for myself. There's two more children's books in the process, and there's a comic book that should, should be coming. I don't want to drop the date yet because they're still in the preliminary stages. I also have clients with One Way Publishing. We're working on those books too. So be on the lookout for all that. And I, I didn't even touch on the new podcast yet. Mm, didn't even touch on that. But you know what? Let's touch on it. Oh, let's go. So the podcast e evolved from the lab to now it evolved to black and blue. 
And Black and Blue can be found on YouTube. It can be found on uh, LinkedIn under Cleet Tillman. It can be found on two pages on Facebook, whether it's Black and Blue or Coach Cleet. And it can be found on um, another, I'm sorry, I have two pages on, on YouTube as well, the uh, Black and Blue channel and the, um, the Coach the Cleet Tillman channel. And with that, I'm interviewing same format, but now it's kind of more zoned in where first responders and law enforcement officers, whether they're rookie, seasoned, or retirees, and we talk about their training, experiences, and publications, where, again, we, it's an attempt to humanize the bag. The show, a different side, there's two sides of law enforcement. So, therefore, you can see, yes, we work this and we do this. We still have families. We like football games. We, we, we still volunteer. We're about service. But it shows both aspects of that. And of course, with the platform that I use, now I have commercial breaks where you see Sergeant B safe training videos. And that, that was because I tried to reach out to somebody, I can't say the names that, you know, that dog that's in law enforcement that likes to take a bite out of things. They wouldn't let me uh, show those training videos and other training videos. So I created my own cartoon, Sergeant B safe with Captain Chaos and their edutainment videos on how different ways where you could be safe. And that's a YouTube channel in itself. So make sure y'all check out Sergeant B Saved cartoons on YouTube. There it is. That's bro. a mouthful. There was a mouthful, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, with all the books, how can they get where can they get a copy? So my website, workwithclee.com, is the hub for everything. And they're on Amazon, they're on Lulu.com as well. But if you go to the workwithclee.com, that'll give you access to all the books and podcasts. It'll send it centralizes everything. It's like a link tree and it puts all that information out. There it is. There it is. Well, how can they reach you if anyone else has a question? About so if you have any questions, if you guys know me on Facebook, you can reach out on there. You can shoot me a message. But workwithclee.com, again, that same website, you, know, you can leave a message. You can ask your question, and I'll get back to you in a timely manner. There it is. There it is. You see, this is a hardworking man, y'all. <laughs> He's an author, a police officer, a host. What else, man? What else can you do? A family man? <laughs> he does it all, man. And I'm just proud to have him here on Rise Above today. And with that being said, we'll try it out right after this. You already know who it is. It's Michael C. The source of life over the mic. You already know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's the pod deck, y'all. It's the pod deck, y'all. Y'all know what I do. I shuffle the pod deck. We get about out of question. Guess answers the question. Then after that, shout out. Right out. Let's go get him. Go ahead and pick the new card, right? Yep. Bum. What is your greatest achievement? What is your greatest achievement? Hmm. My greatest achievement is being multifaceted. And, and got two sons. Uh, one's an adult, one soon to be an adult. Uh, being a positive role model while building a business and a legacy and still working full time. I don't, I'm uh, very tired. Uh, don't know how to do it, but when I think of them, I know that I'm leaving a, a, a footprint for them to follow so they can be the best version of themselves when they become self-actualized. So my greatest achievement is to never stop and to constantly keep evolving and keep pursuing my dreams. I know that's right. I know that's right. Got any shout out? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to you in this podcast, man. Many blessings to you. Thank you for having me come on here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I'm looking to watch you flourish. Uh, definitely going to give you a shout out on my podcast and, and uh, as well, get you some views, get you some um, not notice notifications and things. Got to give a shout out to uh, uh, Shayla because she's always right there uh, and, and good times and bad times. And without her, none of these books would have been published. Got to give a shout out to all the guests that have been on all my platforms. I can't name them all because it go live weekly, <laughs> once a week, and I don't want to leave nobody out. Well, but right. without them, and they're the ones who give me inspiration to keep moving it forward, I, I wouldn't, there, there wouldn't be any black and blue, there wouldn't be any lab, there wouldn't be any Coach Clee. You already know. You already know. You already know my sky boxers. Y'all know what we do out here, man. We out here boxing it left and right at the perspectives. You know what we're doing. 
skybox rise above, you already know what we're doing. But at the end of the day, you already know what it is, Nico. You already know what it is, Noel. I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you love this episode, I would love to hear from you. All you have to do is email me at the one, the number one skybox at email.com with your thoughts, your questions, or who would you love to sit here with me and have that beautiful conversation? I'd like to thank my man, Mr. Tillman, doing his thing, the host, author, and police officer, serves and protect, and a little bit more. My name is Mike C, the source of light, over the mic. Until next time, be good to yourself, y'all.